All right, good morning, guys. Wednesday, September the 5th, just coming up to 9.15. And we're on to part two of the uh, hood bonnet repaint on the 60 TR3A. And where we left off last night was we just uh, guide coated what was left of the filler on the top of this hood. And we're going to get continue uh, sanding this this morning and to see if we got any highs or lows. Uh, before we get this into epoxy primer, hopefully by the end of today this should be an epoxy primer. But uh, we'll see how things go and we'll see what crops up along the way. Anyway, that's the plan for today. We'll see what happens. Okay, after uh, some more sanding, we've got a few obvious uh, low spots that we need to fill with some more filler. One being here, as shown by the guide coat. One being here, one being here. And I've got a few little uh, pits that I need to fill here and there. A few here. I've got a fairly big one there. So we'll just do a little scratch over the top of that. So we're gonna break out the filler and uh, a little height to those areas and then we'll continue sanding. Okay, we've uh, added that second spot of filler and sanded it down a bit. We've added another uh, stage of uh, guide coat and we're gonna step down to 220 grit uh, sandpaper on the long block and hopefully we'll, this will be the, uh, the final block out but we'll come back and uh, take a look when it's done. Okay, just after 12 noon and we've got the uh, sanding almost completed and it's looking pretty good. So a few little areas to touch up, but not too bad. I think I'm going to take this opportunity to go and buy my clear coat and to buy my high build primer. Well, I still can. I've got about an, probably about an hour return trip to go to the uh, body shop store, so I'm probably going to do that now. I don't think I'm going to be able to paint today. It's pretty high humidity, probably 80% humidity out here. So I may want to wait to actually apply my epoxy primer until tomorrow which is unfortunate. Tomorrow is supposed to be a big cold front coming in, so it looks like the weather will be better on Thursday and Friday for painting. If not a little bit too cool, it's supposed to drop down to about a high of 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, but uh, low humidity, so it should be just about right. Uh, maybe a slightly, a slight bit warmer would be good, but uh, better than uh, high humidity and high temperature. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna go off and uh, pick up those products. We'll be back in a bit. Alright guys, just coming up to uh, 8 p.m. on Wednesday night. Unfortunately, I haven't been out here for most of the day. I did go on my uh, product run to the parts store and then when I came back home it was just too freaking hot to be out here. So, I've stayed inside most of the day doing other things and uh, just finally got out here to uh, 
add a little extra scratch coat to the corners here with a little bit low still so just letting that set up and we're going to do a little bit more sanding that's pretty much the only area where we need to sand just hang on for a second i'm going to turn the radio down a little bit sorry to the eagles anyway so yeah we're getting there but uh let me show you the product i got so um i mentioned that we were going to let's go through what's going to be in order here so uh, we wanted to do epoxy primer first now i did have the raptor or sorry the u-pole epoxy uh, primer that i've been using for under the raptor liner but i'm going to need that anyway for the uh, inner fenders for example uh, and for the uh, exterior of the fenders i haven't uh, primed those yet so i just picked up a bit more uh, epoxy uh, primer um, for the hood bonnet whatever you want to call it so there's the primer itself and there's the catalyst for the epoxy primer um, then we are going to top coat that with some polyester primer I've used uh, Featherfield G2 in the past so this is a, a good product by uh, made by Evercoat so that'll be the uh, top coat for the um, for the epoxy primer and then uh, we'll sand that down to probably about 400 grit 400 to 600 grit wet uh, and then we'll end up doing the base coat uh, which I have down there on the floor already and then we'll get to the clear coat and I mentioned I usually use the matrix uh, AG40 um, and here it is here Autoglass 2.1 Hero design clear coat so it's a high solid clear coat and uh, I got the medium temperature and I was having a bit of a struggle in my mind as to what I wanted to do, slow or medium, and it's supposed to be a little bit cooler here over the next uh, few days, somewhere around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think that the medium is probably the right uh, choice for the weather that's coming up. And if I uh, do any painting in the fall or in the spring next year, um, it'll probably be a medium uh, temperature that I require early, late in the fall or early in the summer or early in the spring when I go to uh, actually use clear again I'll probably need a medium anyway so anyway that was the uh, decision we made to go with the uh, medium uh, hardener for the clear coat hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me in the butt it's a small panel anyway and uh, you know not very hot temperature so it should be good it's a little bit difficult panel to uh, to put clear on and you know I'm not an expert by any means I'm more of a novice but uh, what happens with the clear is when it starts to run um, especially if you have a slow or extra slow clear it tends to pool I think down so it runs off this edge it tends to pool down here and pool in here so we don't want to definitely have that happen so that's what we got with the medium as well that's what I think in my mind anyway in my my novice uh, painter mind says to me anyway that's it for now we'll uh, continue sanding on we'll be out here for another hour or so before I pack it in for the night usually nine o'clock is my uh, time to go in so we'll call it a night at nine o'clock so good morning guys it's Thursday now and we're just getting ready to uh, put the uh, bonnet slash hood into epoxy primer so we're just about to uh, tape up the uh, or tape off the bottom everywhere except for the edges so we're going to uh, just tape that up nicely so we don't get any overspray on the, the uh, bottom of the hood and we'll flip it over and I'll give you a last quick look before we go ahead and shoot the epoxy so look who's here this morning say hello hello <laughs> I think we could definitely get into a lot of trouble if we we're both on vacation at the same time. Okay? We could probably restore a couple cars. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> we can finish uh, everything. We probably do. Probably if we had two weeks vacation, we could probably do the GT6. Do get that back on the road. <laughs> All right, we're back uh, working on the trailer this morning. Uh, we're going to do the finish off the uh, light install uh, that we didn't get to uh, last week, and uh, we'll do a little few other little things while we're here. We're thinking of still running. We didn't run the auxiliary wire in the uh, truck um, and Elaine is still thinking that uh, it'd be a good idea to run that black auxiliary wire so we'll have a little more discussion about it. I think we're concerned about um, the uh, trailer breakaway battery not being charged um, so I think that's why we want to have the auxiliary to actually uh, charge this battery because this battery has actually got power to it. Uh, we actually just unhook the uh, the negative right now just to keep it from discharging but it obviously it obviously has power when that's hooked up and we've got a small little LED here in our uh, switch that stays on so it's obviously going to drain the battery over a period of time so we need a way to charge the battery back up anyway that's our thought process so we'll uh, we'll talk a bit more about it uh, this morning and by the way he's getting uh, pretty brave in his adventures he's now 
45 minutes away from uh, from home in the uh, newly restored TR6. So no windshield wipers on. I hope it doesn't rain today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lisa's got the top done, so that's good. Anyway, there's always rain X. We work civilized here, right? Yeah, so we can't we can't yeah, we can't start working without a fresh <laughs> uh, a fresh baked croissant. So there you go. Yeah. Nice buttered croissant. Really delicious. I know that. I tried to uh, trade Alin the uh, masking job versus the wiring job on the lights, but he wouldn't trade me. So, anyway, I had to go ahead and mask this myself. Anyway, the bottom is done. We're going to flip it over and uh, we'll prep the surface, get some grease and wax remover on it, make sure it's wiped down 100%, and then we're ready to hit it with epoxy. Okay, here we go. First coat, epoxy primer. All wiped down, tacked off. Put the fans out front. So, ready to go. While I've been painting, Elena's is working on the uh, lights, and if you remember, this fender light was not working. It's working now. There was a problem inside the fixture itself, so that's now been fixed and works. And we're working on uh, putting the LED lights in the trailer. So what we've had to do here is Elena's fabricated a few little metal brackets. I made them uh, paint them and uh, clean all the rust off them. Anyway, he's made these little brackets for the lights to pop into and he just wired them up. So we've got one at the back, we've got the original here in the middle, and we've got one coming up at the front at the moment. There's a little bracket, and that just pops up into the bracket. So it's looking good, nice and clean. The good thing is this one I can just touch my head on, and these ones are nice uh, flush mount, so, and they're quite bright, which is great. There you go. That one works. This one's on a uh, switch. And then we got the one in the back. And we're gonna put another LED one here, just off to the side to give this one some help if we wanna turn this one off. Which is probably the fact, he doesn't like the fact when we took this bulb down, all the wiring is contained within and it's very close to the bulb. So it looks like the, even the ground wire had already been sort of partially melted already from the heat from the bulb. So. We'll put the LEDs in and probably just keep this guy off. Okay, epoxy is done, and for the most part it went okay. Although I have some issues here. I'm not sure if that's water or whether it's some kind of reaction. It should have been a reaction. The panel was very clean, but anyway, we'll sand that down and see if we can get rid of that. There's uh, three coats of epoxy on here, so we've got a little bit, a little bit here as well. But uh, anyway, it's done, and. Uh, Next part, we'll try to see if we can sand those uh, imperfections out. If not, we'll respray it. Well, 7.40, and if you can believe it, we're still at it. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the um, trailer bakes, trying to get them uh, adjusted a bit better. They weren't uh, locking up as firm as they should when we had the controller all the way up to max. So uh, we fixed those. Um, the shoes were way out of adjustment. Like I said, the previous owner had cut the connections, and I'm assuming he also wound the drums back as far as you could once he cut the connection. So anyway, we've adjusted them, took them apart again and adjusted them. And then we found out one of the magnets was a little bit weak. So we did some work on that and uh, they're working perfectly now. So next job is we are going to uh, put some red lines on uh, the TR6 and see what it looks like. So I've got my red lines stacked up in here. So we'll uh, lend them temporarily and see what the car looks like. Maybe get it to British Car Day with red lines and uh, see how it looks. Okay, the red lines are on. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this because it's pretty dark out. It's about uh, 8 o'clock or so. It definitely has a much bigger improvement over what was on there. So I'm going to put a little bit of air in there. So, and he'll be on his way. Anyway, we'll pull her back in the driveway.